They, they just have a whole different outlook on life and they seem very go-getting, compassionate, activists, individuals. We are very open-minded when it comes to voicing our opinion. We know what we want and we go for it and we strive for greatness. If we are in disagreement or agreement or something, we're going to let everybody know whether they like it or not. A lot of the previous generations need to start, you know, giving us a little bit more credit in the sense that they didn't grow up in these, I believe, are harder times. They don't take it for granted. They, uh, they have it at their fingertips and they're ready to use it at any time. Like, I feel like technology is our medium, um, you know, whether it's a rant on Twitter or, or you know, stage a pro, uh, protest or whatever. Yeah, just more conveniency, connections, stuff people would never imagine we would we'd be able to do in like 20 years from now. We're constantly in the loop of what's going on now, what's going on, who's, who's doing what, uh, what's my life look like? Is it anywhere near as fun as my friend? It doesn't make a difference to me if I ever had to see that, you know, that, that, that those things again. I mean, I could give it away and give it up and I would be completely happy. I feel like we're a lot more lonelier um, in this time. I feel like people's, people's skills are going down. The bit that really is frightening as well is the, um, some of the hatred and the abuse that that comes through social media. You're less likely to say something horrible directly to someone's face, right? But the screen gives you some kind of protection. The question is what I'm gonna do next. And um, you know, what have I learned so far? Has it helped me get to the next step? I can't say with 100% certainty that I do feel ready. My generation has ample amount of potential. People realize that Gen Zers have an opportunity to solve some of the problems that exist in our country. We have power and we utilize it and I think that's something that we should continue doing in order to keep our presence as Gen Zers known in a positive light. One last question. Suppose, Lord Russell, this film were to be looked at by our descendants, like a Dead Sea Scroll in a thousand years' time. What would you think it's worth telling that generation about the life you've lived and the lessons you've learned from it. I should like to say two things, one intellectual and one moral. The intellectual thing I should want to say to them is this. When you are studying any matter or considering any philosophy, ask yourself only what are the facts and what is the truth that the facts bear out. Never let yourself be diverted either by what you would wish to believe or by what you think would have beneficent social effects if it were believed. But look only and solely at what are the facts. That is the intellectual thing that I should wish to say. The moral thing I should wish to say to them is very simple. I should say, love is wise, hatred is foolish. In this world, which is getting more and more closely interconnected, we have to learn to tolerate each other. We have to learn to put up with the fact that some people say things that we don't like. We can only live together in that way. And if we are to live together and not die together, we must learn a kind of charity and a kind of tolerance, which is absolutely vital to the continuation of human life on this planet.
I generation, net generation, post millennials, zoomers, digital natives. All of the following are words used to describe this new generation, most commonly known as Gen Z. A demographic of young people that are fast taking the world by storm. But just what is Gen Z? By definition, Generation Z is the demographic cohort succeeding millennials and preceding Generation Alpha, consisting of anyone born from 1997 to 2012 and between the ages of 11 and 26 as of the year 2023. Born into a time of ever-present technology, the term digital native has also become synonymous with Gen Z, meaning those that grew up in the digital age. But Gen Z is much more than their historical classification. Countless factors have defined and shaped this generation from their entrance to this world, including the time in which they lived and continue to live through, their unique qualities and adaptations living through truly unprecedented times, and their emergence into the professional world as many graduate from college and prepare for a future that largely remains uncertain. But just what separates them from the generations before us? What does it really mean to be a digital native? And how has this influenced the way in which they operate and are perceived in society? These crucial discoveries must be made in order to truly understand what makes Gen Z a generation like no other. To truly understand the significance of Gen Z, one must first understand where millennials end and Generation Z begins. Not in terms of age or birth year, but the defining social, economic, and political climate of the time. To start off with, millennials were between the ages of 5 and 20 when the 9-11 terrorist attacks took place, while the majority of Gen Z have no memory of such an event. According to the Pew Research Center, millennials also grew up, quote, in the shadow of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, a time of great political polarization that still affects us today, and were between 12 and 27 during the 2008 election, seeing firsthand the power of the youth vote as it helped to elect the first black president. These factors are all reflective of the emergence of the quote, most racially and ethnically diverse adult generation in the nation's history topped only recently by Generation Z. Aside from the political state of the time, the economy also played a large role in impacting millennials' emergence into the workforce and U.S. market. The economy was at the height of the recession when many millennials first entered the workforce, and consequently, their life choices have been shaped by this recession in a unique way, different from that of Gen Z. Finally, Technology also played and continues to play a crucial role in defining generational differences. While Generation X grew up during the beginning of the computer revolution, and Millennials during the internet explosion, Gen Z shared their rise to power with the emergence of smartphones, an invention that has changed the way we all communicate, and ultimately defined a generation. I am a Millennial, and how I think my generation compares to Gen Z. Um, I'd say Gen Z are what they call digital natives. Like they were born with like an iPad or a iPhone in their hand. Um, whereas for me, I didn't get my first phone until I was about like nine or 10. Um, so in, in that regard, I'd, I'd say we're, we're, we're different in just how fast technology is picked up by, by Gen Z, almost, almost as if it's like second nature. It's like, almost like, where's the button I can push? Whereas um, that, that is more of my life now, but it wasn't always that way. They just have a whole different outlook on life and they seem very go-getting, compassionate, activists, individuals. Um, whereas for my generation, I think that that is the same too, but I still think that there's slower than Gen Z with technology. What makes Gen Z so unique from a technology standpoint is that they were the first to grow up with every innovation of their predecessors, such as the TV, computer, and internet, and every step forward after this, such as the invention of the iPhone, high-speed data, 
and the widespread use of social media occurred during Generation Z's coming of age, ultimately affecting their very basis of communication and interaction. Gen Z is the first generation to have grown up with smartphones in their lives and how that fundamentally has, um, you know, affected their behaviors and how how they live and uh, that I that I found particularly interesting to study so then I started to discover Gen Z as a generation because I thought like Gen Z millennials are all pretty much the same thing right um, but not at all and I think there's a very uh, interesting distinct quality uh, about your generation and uh, which is it was fascinating and, and how I think you're very different to the generations that have gone before you. Not all of that is going to be because of technology. There are other things going on in the world which will inform how a generation grows up but I think technology has played a massive role in, in that. It's refreshing growing up with people who've started out having phones and computers and tablets and so on. What I used to get a lot of in class was, um, you know, people would complain and they would say, I don't like computers. And I would have to explain that liking them isn't the question. It doesn't matter if you like them. Your job is going to depend on them. And so you have to learn to work with them. And we finally have a group of students that are coming to school that uh, they don't say, I don't like computers. They, they, they just assume computers are going to be in their lives. So if they like them or not, it's no longer a question. It's how do you use the thing? What do you do with it? What can you do with it? I feel like our technology that we have today is a lot more advanced. Therefore, you know, we um, took advantage of that technology and use it to our, our liking. And that's what really fuels one of the major fires or core cores of the Generation Z is that our technology is different and we use it in ways to express ourselves. Like I feel like technology is our medium, um, you know, whether it's a brand on Twitter or, or you know, stage a pro, uh, protest or whatever. Um, so I think that separates us, you know, from the rest. Circling back to the state of the world, Gen Z has also had their own unique experiences growing up in a world of increasing economic, political, and environmental tension. This generation now comprises the largest population of college students, and while they are the least likely to drop out of high school and most likely to attend college, this has not come without its struggles. Most notably, Gen Z has lived through the COVID-19 pandemic, which first ravaged the world in 2020 and still serves as a poignant reminder of a time of great fear and loss across generations. They've also endured the frightening rise in school shootings across the country and an increase in depression and other mental health issues on a level that has never been seen before. Most importantly, however, these struggles are a reminder of the strength of this generation as it's withstood some truly unforeseen and unique challenges. This is a quality of Gen Z that is often overlooked. In fact, Generation Z is often regarded as being soft and hypersensitive. On the contrary, however, Gen Z has proved their strength in more ways than one. A lot of the previous generations need to start, you know, giving us a little bit more credit in the sense that they didn't grow up in these, I believe, are harder times. I, I, I well believe that we're in some very challenging, mentally draining, exhausting times, and I just don't see it ever being in a more comfortable state. Each generation has its labels or defining qualities that set them apart from the rest in both positive and negative ways. The silent generation was known for their traditionalism and conformity to authority. Baby boomers are known for their independence, hard work, and economic prosperity, but are often stereotyped as being stubborn. Generation X is also known for their independence, however are often portrayed as being apathetic. Millennials are known for their collaboration, challenging the status quo and valuing a work-life balance, but are often regarded as lazy and unprepared. And finally, Generation Z is known for their acceptance, open-mindedness, and diversity but is stereotyped as being addicted to technology and lacking basic communication skills. Ultimately, with every positive quality comes misconceptions and stereotypes. 
looking at the positive attributes of Generation Z more closely. According to Roberta Katz, a senior research scholar at Stanford Center for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences, quote, a typical Gen Zer is a self-driver who deeply cares about others, strives for a diverse community, is highly collaborative and social, values flexibility, relevance, authenticity, and non-hierarchical leadership. And while dismayed about inherited issues like climate change, has a pragmatic attitude about the work that has to be done to address those issues. In other words, members of Gen Z are inherent change makers and valuers of diversity, such that they are the most diverse generation after millennials. Technology and a digitally connected culture have also paved the way for Gen Z's appreciation of diversity through their exposure to digital tools at a young age, which allowed them to develop a greater appreciation for different cultures and to find their own identities. People feel as if we don't have everything together, we're lazy, but in reality, I think that we stand forth on what we believe in, we know when to ask questions, we're open-minded, and we know what, what we want. We learn how to work smarter and not harder and use that as a benefit in the long run. In a good way, I think that they are perceived as disruptors. Like they, they come into whatever environment that they're in and then they, they, they have the power to change things. So I think that's good um, because they're, you, you can look over the past 20 years and just see all the things that went wrong. Um, and then this new generation coming in with all this passion and firepower to make changes and be like, okay, that didn't work, here's what we want to do. Because of that firepower, because of that passion, there may be a, a lack of awareness of that history that did come before them. Like, to put it bluntly, like Gen Z, you just got here. There was so many, so much more things that happened um, before, you know, the internet, before the past like 20, 25 years of, of, of the internet, um, Instagram, Snapchat, all that stuff. Closely tied to the title of change makers, Gen Z is also a generation of protesters, shown in their overwhelming participation in movements related to issues such as climate destruction, gender equality, and police brutality. Their political and social engagement is fast becoming a defining quality of the generation. Protests, um, you see George Floyd, you see um, various protests when it comes to women's rights and change, school shootings, those are the things that we as Gen Zers should highlight. And even when it comes through different forms of social change, uh, the Senate 10 bill that's going to, be, to try and be implemented within West Virginia schools for students to carry firearms on college campuses. Finally, Gen Z is also known for placing a priority on mental health and well-being. While mental health among Gen Z is at a low point, with a 2022 study finding that 42% of Gen Zers have a diagnosed mental health condition, they highly value it in the workplace and elsewhere as a basic requirement for a healthy environment. We are very open-minded when it comes to voicing our opinion, and I think that what makes us differ, differ from other generations is that we know what we want and we go for it and we strive for greatness. If something is becoming a challenge, we tend to kind of steer towards it and go in a different direction where we put our mental health before other things and we kind of grasp this concept of creativity to where we can be ourselves and stand up for what we want. And I think that's a blessing in disguise. I feel like the biggest quality we have is we're not afraid to speak our mind. Um, I feel like if we are in disagreement or agreement or something, we're gonna let everybody know whether they like it or not. Um, I feel like we're not afraid to express ourselves, our feelings, our emotions, um, what's wrong with the world, what's right with the world. Um, I feel like we're a lot more open when it comes to communication and uh, just a lot more expressive, I would say. As one might expect, the majority of Gen Z stereotypes are related to technology dependency. 
The fact is that Gen Zers have never grown up in a time without technology at their disposal, and it's affected the cultural fabric of this demographic, whether they liked it or not. However, the reliance on technology is not limited to Gen Z, as its effect can be seen across generations. Gen Z is only more technologically adept when it comes to using social media and various apps for everyday tasks. Yeah, just more conveniency, connections, stuff people would never imagine we would, we would be able to do in like 20 years from now, you know, just talking on our phones, FaceTiming people, you know, making appointments, LinkedIn, like talking to all these professionals, e like emails, just, just all this stuff. One misconception closely tied to this is that Gen Z only values instant gratification, particularly as it pertains to climbing the ranks in the workplace. While this generation is used to getting things rather quickly, as they've been on the internet their entire lives, this is not representative of the demographic as a whole. The reality is that Gen Z has so much to offer, and even though they are used to a fast-moving world and may dislike a stagnant work environment, their talents outweigh the surrounding narrative. Another stereotype and misconception are that Gen Z doesn't want to work, resigning from workplaces due to laziness. However, while many Gen Z workers did leave their job this year, it was not due to laziness or defeat, but instead a desire for greater opportunities within their field. Gen Zers not only want to earn a paycheck, but live their purpose through their work. They also highly value diversity, equity, and inclusion practices within the workplace. And if they feel that the job is not meeting those standards, they'll likely move on to the next position. Many of these misconceptions have affected the way that Gen Z is viewed and treated by other generations. The main way being the hesitancy of some businesses to hire Gen Z, which can hinder the hiring efforts of younger generations. But despite this, many Gen Zers college students and young people in general are working to dispel these misconceptions. Um, my name is Bill Amata. I'm the chairman of IW Group, which is based in Los Angeles. Seven of our interns started the National Millennial Community, which is now known as the National Millennial and Gen Z Community. And what it does is to encourage civil discourse in a country that is heavily divided, but also to help Millennials and Gen Zs express themselves so that they are not only part of the conversation, but part of the solution. In doing so, they dispel some of the negative myths and stereotypes that are often assigned to them. We believe younger Millennials and Gen Z would love to be involved in problems and solutions, but they want to be pulled in early into those conversations and they don't want those things to be hidden from them. I see Gen Z and younger millennials helping to dispel some of the negative myths about them when they get engaged in these conversations with executives, from not only corporations and governmental agencies, but also nonprofits and foundations and academia. And when they engage in these conversations, a number of things happen. People realize that Gen Zers have an opportunity to solve some of the problems that exist in our country, but also some of the problems and challenges faced by companies and governmental agencies. The National Millennial and Gen Z community is just one example of young people actively changing the narrative surrounding Generation Z and working to dispel some of these stereotypes and misconceptions. They serve as a reminder that change is possible and that the aims and talents of Gen Z are much greater than the narratives and stereotypes that surround them. Digital natives are defined as people who are very familiar with digital technology because they've grown up in the information age. This encompasses virtually all of Generation Z as a demographic that has never known a time without technology. Like Gen Z, digital natives are known for their heavy reliance and dependency on technology. However, this trait is not limited to just this demographic, as it's impacted people of all age groups on a global scale. Let's take a quick trip back a few decades, to the year 2002 to be specific. The first camera phone was introduced, and over 80 billion were sold during this year. During this time, many Gen Zers were still very young, or not even born yet. In 2005, a video sharing site called YouTube first joined the internet scene, 
becoming the fourth most visited site on the web. And then in 2007, everything changed with a company called Apple. This was the year that the first iPhone was released. It completely revolutionized the tech and smartphone world. It was the first multi-touch phone and the first of its kind to have a browser with full web access. Subsequently, in 2010, the first Apple iPad was introduced, which was essentially an enlarged iPhone and was great for kids because of its large screen size. Now, fast forwarding back to 2023, one can truly see just how much technology has evolved over the years with access to instant information in a pocket-sized device that once filled entire rooms. But what does this mean for consumers? How has technology impacted the masses, particularly Gen Z and digital natives, in positive and negative ways? And how has time spent on technology, particularly social media apps, affected Gen Z's behavior and socialization? The answer is not an easy one. And discoveries are still being made about the full effects on increased internet and social media use on the health of young people. I mean, look, there are some really, really great things about social media. The fact that it can connect you with people in different corners of the world. Um, you know, I think people who, you know, let's say you're in a small town and you are, are somebody who is some way marginalized. Maybe you have a different sexual orientation or, or maybe you have a different um, you're from a different ethnic background or whatever, if you're in a small community and you've only got access to a whole load of other people who look in exactly the same and think exactly the same as you, that can actually be quite difficult. So I think um, what it's done is it's enabled people to find their tribe in places beyond just their, their local town or their local village or, or, or whatever. Gen Z gets a lot of critique from, from people my age. I'm, I'm in between the, uh, the boomers and Gen X, and I, I've kind of identified with Gen X. I see the digitally connected world through rose-colored glasses. Uh, this was technology that came about during my lifetime, and so I find it incredibly exciting. And what I get to do with Generation Z is work with people who they don't take it for granted, they, uh, they have it at their fingertips and they're ready to use it at any time. According to my um, iPhone, I spend roughly uh, probably four to five hours a day on social media. I use YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Oh, every day. Every day. I'm not saying I'm a saint. You know, I'm part of GC2, so I use the technology to the best of its ability. I'm on, when I wake up, brush my teeth, I'm on it, you know, seeing what, you know, the new NBA trade deadlines are, what the news is in the NFL, you know, so you always got to have some, some type of technology in front of you because we're moving into a new age of where everything's becoming digital. We're moving away from paper, newspapers, you know, stuff like that. So we got to learn how to adapt with the new culture of uh, technology. In my experience, I try to limit my use of like all the technology. I try to limit myself on how long I'm spending on YouTube, TikTok, and of course, you know, Instagram. And I've seen I've kind of strayed back a little bit. Try to more focus on my own personal endeavors and goals. And yeah, it, it, it doesn't make a difference to me if I ever had to see that, you know, that, that, that those things again. I mean, I don't need to survive with social media. I don't need to survive with all this constant. So I could, I could th give it away and give it up and I would be completely happy. I've actually pretty much, um come off social media my, myself now, I, I barely use it. Um, I, I kind of on LinkedIn because that's a sort of professional environment and that's okay. And I feel um, I really don't miss it at all. But I think it's actually really difficult for Gen Z to do that because it's so much, it's so integral to your lives and your social lives, right? And, um, you know, if you're not part of that, you're, you know, you're missing out, right? Um, and who wants to be the kid who's excluded from the rest of the group? What we do know, however, is that 65% of Gen Z use social media on a daily basis to communicate with friends and family, get information, shop, and so much more. What we also know is that from 2009 to 2017, 
depression rates increased by more than 60% among teens between 14 and 17 years of age. While there are so many potential causes of depression among Gen Z, including daily stress and the pandemic to name a few, researchers are linking increased social network usage to negative mental health more than ever before. The bit that really is frightening as well is the, um, some of the hatred and the abuse that uh, comes through social media, you know, the doxing, just the really, the horrible hate speech. And that, I think, is made worse because you, having the screen, um, you, 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 you're less likely to say something horrible directly to someone's face, right? But the screen gives you some kind of protection. And then on top of that, you can be horrible to somebody anonymously as well. So the, that anonymized safety of the screen uh, um, makes people think it's okay to say really mean, horrible stuff. And that then ends up translating back into real physical life too because it suddenly becomes normalized. So suddenly it becomes okay to be very misogynistic or racist or, or whatever it is. I think that social media has had both a positive and negative effect. Uh, when you look at beauty standards, people tend to look towards social media and wonder if they are supposed to have a specific image in order to be great. Um, you see a form of cyberbullying being created among social media from uh, kids in middle school all the way up throughout high school. I feel we can have a deeper understanding of what is in insensitive and what is offensive and what's not, or having a better understanding of intention, you know? I feel like we don't really understand intention so much, but we like we just so quick to like judge something to be offensive or you know just make something can't like cancel culture came from us you know canceling a lot of people because they said stuff in the past or they may have said a joke that would have flew back in the day but now it's like whoa i can't believe you said that you know just the, the, the wokeness of everybody you could say you know it's kind of annoying but um at the same time i can't completely you know crush on it i feel like some of it is uh helpful it helps, you know, pass laws and stuff like that. It helps get progress, but other times it's just like just petty stuff people try to do just to get likes and comments and attention, I guess. While social media has its obvious benefits, including the ability to stay connected with those you care about from around the globe and bring people with similar interests together through online groups, it presents several dangers to its young users, particularly Gen Z including the promotion of false images and unrealistic beauty standard and cyberbullying. You know, we can't live our lives like you could back in, per se, the 2000s, 1990s, 80s. I mean, we're constantly in the loop of what's going on now, what's going on, who's, who's doing what, uh, what's my life look like, is it anywhere near as fun as my friend or this or that. And I think a lot of those kinds of um, worries are just distractions from, you know, completing our purposes and, and trying to do more beneficial activities to help us grow as a society. I feel like we're a lot more lonelier um, in this time because of this. Um, and lonelier in the sense of actually getting to talk to people. I mean, we know we talk to people all the time online and stuff, but it's not really the same, I, I would say. I feel like people's, people's skills are going down. Like their talking skills, their um, actual, you know, just conversational skills, like just mannerisms, manners. Um, people can't make eye contact no more. Like it's like, you know, just stuff like that. So people are so used to, you know, being behind a screen, they forget how to talk to people. These harmful practices on social media apps affect how users of all ages view themselves and can ultimately lead to feelings of lower self esteem and depression. But all is not lost. While Gen Z has the highest rates of depression and anxiety among other generations, they are also the most likely to seek help from mental health professionals and talk about it openly with others. This helps bring awareness to these issues and enables those of previous generations to understand the unique struggles of digital native. What I find uh, most 
interesting is the there is definitely a change in relationship to um, mental issues. In fact, we need a better word because people are so um, sensitive to um, you know kind of intellectual issues. And what I'm finding now is that people will come right up to me after class and say, "I, I have ADHD. This is what I need to succeed," and that is really refreshing because then you can deal with something as an issue and it's no longer an impediment. It's just something you have to deal with uh, and dealing with neurodiversity in general uh, is something that, um, you know, I've been waiting to see us do. I mean, obviously the healthcare profession's been really strong, but the, the stigma has been really profound and I, I see that stigma going away. Gen Z is also making use of social media for the good, using the platforms and photo and video formats to spread awareness on issues they're passionate about, finding commonalities and sharing their struggles with other users, and making a difference through their digital influence as content creators. Well, one thing about Gen Z and younger millennials is they know how to use social media, not only to benefit themselves, but to stay connected and that's the beauty of social media. It's a way to stay connected. It's a way to push issues. It's a way to challenge yourself and challenge others. And it's a way to bring people together in conversations and discussions that uh, boomers and many Gen Xers don't know how to do. Some Gen Zers are even ditching their smartphones and social media and turning to flip phones for the mental health reflecting the overwhelming need for and prioritization of positive mental health practices among Generation Z. People are going on smartphone detoxes using one of these. College kids are praising them online, millennials and Gen Z professionals, they're trying them out, making flip phones the ultimate statement on mental health. It's a new way to unplug from smartphones and make life simpler, and it's trending big time. This college student shared online how she switched to a flip phone part-time. We realize that every single problem that we have on a night out, everything that leads to us crying, everything that leads to us having a bad time, stems from our phone. This new trend really shows that Gen Z understands the impact technology is having on their lives. They know that having grown up in this time of smartphones and social media hasn't been good for their mental health. I would say it's it's all about mindful use of it. So asking the question, why am I posting this? Why am I making a video of this? Is it gonna help me? How's it gonna impact the people around me? You know, some of this like sharing stuff about, oh, don't I look wonderful or aren't I on this beautiful holiday and look at me, aren't I doing these wonderful things? You know, how, how are your friends gonna feel if you, pushing that sort of stuff out all the time. You know, it's kind of thinking about that. Um, and then just making sure that, that you have the, the downtime, the time away from it. So, you know, um, going, right, I'm just gonna go into airline mode now, or I'm just gonna take the day off of it and not even check my phone. And As so many members of Gen Z are making the transition into professional life, or have already done so, the question arises, what does a Gen Z run future look like? Is it a promising future? An uncertain future? Is Gen Z ready to face the real world, a world that seems to be increasingly volatile by the day? Only they know the answers to these questions. I think I'm well prepared to take on this next chapter because different generations have taught me various things throughout my lifetime and even those who are of my age and older, it's all a combination of different generations and it has made me become who I am. I think the fear or doubt that I would have is wondering if I'm going to see more people within my age group when I'm going into the workforce. I want to be eligible to at least go into an environment that is young and creative for myself rather than feeling as if I'm working a regular nine to five. I feel like this school, um, this, first of all, I'm from Baltimore City. I'm in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. This is a completely different vibe, culture. It's a culture shock. When I first got here, the culture shock was crazy. 
So I feel like this school really helped me um, understand different cultures, different backgrounds of people from places that I would never think that I would be in. Um, so um, I feel like this school definitely did that for me, like just talking to different people that I wouldn't normally talk to from where I'm from and also having that background from where I'm from also to understand that, that side of the story. Um, so yeah, I feel like this school definitely, from the education, the teachers, the students, um, the facilities, the coaches, uh, I feel like they prepared me a lot to face the world. Everybody is so tense to not offend anybody. Everybody is tense to not be insensitive, that nobody really wants to go out there and make risks, if, I, if that makes sense, because everybody wants to make everybody feel good, if that makes sense. So um, I would say that's the only thing, just walking that line of, you know, because it's, it's, the line gets thinner and thinner every year, in my opinion, of what's, you know, you know, safe to do and what's not safe to do. Well, I do feel a slight sense of, um, you know, pride and I'm really proud of myself that I was able to come this far and, you know, finally graduate college. Um, so the question is what I'm going to do next and, um, you know, what have I learned so far? Has it helped me get to the next step? And so I can't say with 100% certainty that I do feel ready personally I can't speak for my generation I just speak for myself in the sense that I don't feel all the way completely um, prepared because I feel like you know in my personal experience of going to school where I did I wasn't afforded the tools thoroughly enough and long enough to prepare me for a job that requires me to use these technologies, these tools. With what I've seen, I hope that we become more involved with, um, you know, taking, taking the, 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 the baton and finally really getting down dirty with uh, running this crazy world effectively and you know, making a difference, hopefully. According to a study by Cigna, 34% of Gen Z say they are worried about the future and 24% are concerned about a lack of learning and job opportunity. Additionally, 91% of Gen Z reported feeling stress and 98% said they feel burned out. Only 32% of Gen Z report being engaged in work environment and 48% say they are unable to move out of their parents' home due to financial struggles. We, as a generation, are growing up, maturing in a world where we had to grow up quick and we had no time to be young kids, especially when we had social media speeding up the process. From children to adults, that entire time in between has been fast-tracked. So now we're getting in the job force, no time for enjoying anymore. I feel like that aspect has been completely dismembered. Despite all these challenges, and as is frequently the case through the resiliency of this generation, there is a bright side. Regarding concerns of employment uncertainties, this did not deter them from seeking out new job opportunities, with 48% of Gen Z and Millennials planning to look for a new job in the next 12 months. As for stress, despite feeling overwhelmed, Gen Zers are prioritizing mental health and well-being in the workplace and overall, with 78% saying well-being at work is equally as important as their salary. Despite feeling disengaged at work, Gen Z highly values workplace culture in determining whether they will remain at a job, putting greater pressure on employers to better support Gen Z through a meaningful work environment and more opportunities for growth. Lastly, pertaining to Gen Z's financial struggles, although many worry about rising inflation and a lack of money for a wealth of expenses, many young people are learning money management and developing their financial literacy to stay afloat amid the inevitable an unpredictable state of the market.
we have power and we utilize it. And I think that's something that we should continue doing in order to keep our presence as Gen Zers known in a positive light. One thing I always tend to tell people, be comfortable with being uncomfortable because the world never revolves around one person. And in order to exceed to different heights, you have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to accept change and nothing is always permanent. You have to move with time. And so I think with older generations, it's just a matter of adapting to who we are. And as Gen Zers, it's more about teaching others about who we are and our goals, our aspirations, our dreams, and to not back down without a fight. My generation has ample amount of potential. I want to say that we have, we have an idea or, or the natural ability to use technology in a way that does help us progress and make businesses out of. A piece of advice would be networking. When you enter the workforce, there's gonna be, you know, those baby boomers that are still there. So how can you step into the workforce and learn from someone who has like 20, 30 years of experience in your field? Because um, that, that just makes you even more knowledgeable in your field. Um, and then also, be bold, I guess, um, because your generation is coming with such passion, you know, own that too. So if, if someone wants to kind of knock you down for that, own that, because ultimately you are going to inherit whatever it is, um, the world, your industry or whatever. So when that does happen, when that transfer of power does happen, you're not left feeling like you lost a piece of yourself or anything like that. Like you actually are empowered and, and you're, you're owning those characteristics or qualities of, of, of the generation. A piece of advice that I, I still hold dear is just trusting the process too, not wanting to rush everything as well. Um, things take time, they, they just do. We, we still have all the promises for democracy with digital connectivity and we still don't achieve a great democracy, when we, especially when we look around the world. At the, um, it seems that the more we become interconnected, the more um, people, boomer age and so on, are, are pulling apart, or so I should say shrinking in. You know, Make America First is an example where you've got a digitally connected world, the goods and services you're working with are global, and yet people say America First means coming in and closing off our borders, closing off our, our trade, closing off you know, the way the world works and, and being happy to be you know, Americans again. Um, I, I see in Gen Z, and it'll be interesting when people get into political uh, power, which is soon, right? If not already happening, um, if being a digital native doesn't let us see that we are already always interconnected globally. Uh, and that we need to think in terms of the world and the way the world is interconnected. It's my hope that, you know, when you think in terms of Googling and showing up with information from all over the, the world, that um, that would extend to politics. Now, we'll have to see, but, but I'm encouraged by, the, by Generation Z. I'm encouraged. So despite these worries, fears, and uncertainties that persist, the future of Gen Z is still a bright one. Yes, it may be uncertain and ever-changing, but if there's one thing that Gen Z has demonstrated more than ever throughout their lifetime, it's a spirit of resilience and persistence through unprecedented challenges and an ability to withstand the greatest storms of this life. These fears, worries, and doubts are overshadowed by hopes, dreams, and aspirations. As this generation goes out into the world headfirst, ready to take on any challenge or adversity that may arise. Their call to action and responsibility as a group of young leaders is now greater than ever. But this responsibility is met by a generation of change makers and rule breakers. Those that will lead the future, as uncertain as it may be. This is Generation Z.